Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'll be talking about some draft tips to help you guys win your 2020 Fantasy Football League. These are all tips that I think are very helpful and tips that I use in my mock drafts as well that I plan to be using in my drafts come time to actually have your real draft in August. I'm probably going to make an updated version of this video in August, but for right now, these are the tips that I think are going to help you guys get your Fantasy Football Championship. If you guys want some more help, I have a draft guide down below in the description that I sell at 750 a month on Patreon, so you can get it for two months through August for $15, so it's a very good price, and I have a lot of stuff written down there that might be even more additional help for you guys to win your league, so let's get right into it. Draft tips for the 2020 fantasy football season. Also, please click that subscribe button down below. I make content every day. So number one rule, this is the easiest rule, but it's the rule most people forget, and that's actually just understanding the fucking rules of your own league. You gotta understand if it's half PPR, is it full PPR, is it standard. That's very important because there's going to be discrepancies in the rankings based on complete discrepancies based on PPR or standard half. PPR is kind of the nice happy mold right in the middle. You got to understand how many players you need to start at every single position. Can you start two quarterbacks? Can you start a super flex? Is there three wide receivers? Is there three running backs? There's going to be wonky rules in each league. There's also new rules because as fantasy football has gone on, a lot of people have went off of what it used to be. What it used to be, fantasy football was all standard leagues. Now the standard is pretty much PPR or half PPR. And now there's other rules like point per first down, point per incompletion for quarterback. There's all types of different rules. And that's why I sit there and really observe the rules before I go into the draft, like a month before, whenever you get the invite, you got to go ahead and read over all the rules and make sure just like Santa Claus's list, you're checking it once, you're checking it twice. You got to find out who's naughty or fucking nice because you are going to be able to have a strong advantage in your league. If you understand the rules, there's other rules that you could also understand as well. There are rules in some leagues where you don't necessarily have to draft a kicker or a defense and in those type of leagues I typically don't do that because you can build additional depth onto your team and then cut those guys right before the first game and add your kicker and add your defense the second rule that I find very important is to do your research this goes hand in hand with figuring out your league settings because the research you're going to do is going to be tailored to that given league based on its rules Pretty much, you just have to think about it like you're going into a real job interview. You're not going to go into your job not having any fucking idea what is going on. You're not going to go, hey, I want to be a teacher, and you go into the job, and you're interviewing to be a marketer. You have no fucking idea how to do that. So you got to make sure you go into the draft well-researched and well-prepared. Now, there's a multitude of ways to do this. The first thing you should do is definitely not use a fucking magazine. Those things are very outdated. I know people probably say this in every video where you're looking for fantasy tips, but it's true. You don't want to be looking at information from June when you're talking about a draft that's happening in August. Some drafts are even in September, so a lot of that news is going to be very, very outdated. I would use my own draft guide. You guys can buy that down below. I'm not going to force you onto that. So you can do research on a multiple of different ways. What I like to do is look, get a conglomerate of information, a combination of it all. Listen to multiple YouTube podcasts. Listen to multiple podcasts. Read multiple different articles from different people, and then do your own research. Look at some stats and figure it all out. Combine it all together and figure out what your own opinion is because you don't want to go into the draft necessarily just basing everything off of someone else's opinion. My best idea is to know all the players in the draft. Now, I understand that this is going to be very hard, but I try to make my videos so that you guys can understand every single player. I pretty much talk about all of them, especially in the mock draft videos, and don't focus too much on player finishes. I understand where the guy finishes is what matters at the end of the year, obviously, for your team because, hey, this guy finished as a top five guy, really helped me win, but at the end of the day, the more important stat so like points per game, points per route run, points per snap on the field. Those type of things actually help you understand how good of a player they really were because you could finish as the number three guy at your position strictly just playing off of 16 games when in reality another guy would have been much better had he have completed the whole season. So that's something very important to understand. The third most important thing, obviously the big tip, is for mock drafting. You need to make sure you can do your mock drafts because they are very key. They're probably one of the most important things you can do. Obviously, Obviously coming after the research. Now, there's multiple different things you can do in mock drafts because you can actually do mock drafts on multiple different websites. There's best ball leagues like Drafters. What I use, you can use my code Notorious when you're using that shit. But there's also Sleeper, Fantasy Pros. Then you can do mock drafts on your own website. So say you're drafting on ESPN, NFL, Yahoo. There's all different ways of doing it. But what these mock drafts do is you can figure out trends. You can figure out where guys are being drafted. And that's going to be very important for your success in the draft to make sure you're not really reaching for players. But obviously, if you're doing a live in 
in-person draft, that shit kind of goes out the window because people are just drafting randomly based off the rankings instead of really looking at ADP. It helps you get really comfortable in your draft spot because you kind of know where guys are going to go around you. If you have the fifth pick, you might figure out at the fifth pick in the third round, there's a couple of guys there that I like and you can write them down and order them to make it easier so that you know what's going to happen when you're going to make the pick. Sure, you won't be able to 100% figure out what's exactly going to happen in your draft because every draft is different, but it helps you get a lot more comfortable. And another thing is you can try out different strategies. Hey, my normal strategy is going two running backs in the first three rounds, but there's other strategies you can try it as well. You can try going wide receiver really early in the first two rounds. You hammer them. You go zero running back. And then another one, you try, hey, what happens if I go early quarterback? What happens if I don't draft the wide receiver at all? What happens if I go for a guy like Mark Andrews in the third round? You can figure out all types of different strategies based off these mock drafts. So you know what? At the end of the draft, because during the draft, you might be like, holy shit, I love Kelsey in the second round. You draft him. And at the end of the draft, you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, I messed up so bad. I should have drafted a running back there. But if you mock, you will understand what that team will look like at the end of the draft. The fourth tip here is don't go into the draft with a set strategy. Sure, having multiple strategies when coming into the draft is cool. But if you lock yourself into the mental box of going no running back, no wide receiver in the first couple of rounds, then you are completely fucking yourself because then you're going to reach at the position to get a different guy. You want to go in there with the strategy of wanting to win and drafting based upon the value. And there's also other things you could do based on set strategies because my set strategy... It's not necessarily the set strategy because it's just the strategy I like to use. Like I said, draft two running backs in the first three rounds. But if all things go awry, you can draft differently. You just cannot, you just got to make sure that you're not mentally locked in to, say, when you're at pick three or pick seven, you're mentally locked in. I have to get a running back. You don't want to do that. You want to be mentally locked in to get the best player you believe will help you win your fantasy football championship. Fifth tip here is draft using tiers, not just a list because there's overall lists of players, the top 250, top 300 fantasy players sure that list is kind of cool to look at but you want to be drafting based off of the tiers because it lets you figure out hey the running back tier one is falling and there's still a lot of wide receivers in the tier one that I still want so let me draft the running back to make sure because I could probably get another great wide receiver on this on the swing things like that you could say the same thing for wide receiver versus running back and it's easier to figure out when a position is depleting you can really see that the running backs are going or the wide receivers are going so you can make sure you know what to do and it makes it a lot easier to draft based on the value you at the position. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. The sixth tip is to draft more running backs than wide receivers. Now, if you're in a three wide receiver league, I like to go more of a balanced approach. Maybe you get exactly the same, but in a normal two running back, two wide receiver in a flex league, you need to get more running backs because it's so easy to find a fucking wide receiver off the waiver wire three weeks in. That is a good flex. That could be your wide receiver too, rather than a running back. The running backs that you find off the waiver wire are going to be absolutely dinky do they're going to be they're going to be terrible they're going to be god awful if you're trying to pick someone up to win. So you want to make sure you load up the bench with those running backs late in the draft because that could be the golden ticket like your name is Willie goddamn Wonka to win your fantasy football league. And running backs value is just a lot higher because there's like 40 wide receivers that you could probably start every week, whereas there's only about 30 running backs that you want to start every week. Not even that you actually want to start because there's only about 20 or 25 that you actually want to fire up every single week. The seventh tip here is to wait on quarterback unless there is value. Quarterbacks every year are very deep. This might be the most deep year at the quarterback position because quarterbacks that aren't even drafted will likely have a few top 10, top 12, top 14 weeks. This would be a guy in your league. Derek Carr might have multiple weeks inside of the top five due to the fact that they're going to have to throw the ball that many times. So you have to understand that. Picking one early makes you lose extreme depth at the positions that matter, which are what fancy people call as the skill positions, running backs, and wide receivers. If you draft the quarterback early, you might be a bit pissed off when your running back two or your wide receiver two isn't a guy that you necessarily loved as much as it would have been if you waited and instead of drafting Pat Mahomes, you drafted a guy like Danny Dimes later in the draft who has very good value as well. The eighth thing is to make sure you wait 
on kicker and defense. I've seen so many asshats draft a defense in like the ninth round, and you need to understand that an amazing defense will not be amazing the whole season. They will face hard matchups. Just because the Chargers defense is amazing, when they play the Chiefs, they might get dicked the fuck down by Pat Mahomes. You have to understand these things. Last year, everyone was saying the Bears are the best defense for fantasy football. You know what the Bears did? They shit the bed. The defenses that you think are going to be great and be the number one defense just never finished that way. In 2019, it was the Bears. They didn't finish all that well. In 2018, it was the Jaguars. Everyone said, oh, the Jaguars are going to be great. Saxonville, this, that, and the other thing, and they were not very good. So the number one defense typically falls off on a year-to-year basis. Drafting a kicker or defense also, just like drafting a quarterback early, hinders that depth that you can build, and it's very easy to play matchups for kickers and defenses all season long. I make videos every week on figuring out which defenses to play, and we are also going to be talking about kickers on my channel, so I can make it easy for you guys to figure out who you want every single week, and the same thing goes with quarterbacks. You can just easily stream that position, especially if you're in like a 10 or 12 team league. Now, when you get into one of those leagues where it's like 14 team, then you're kind of fucked at streaming, so you kind of have to draft too, but in this, these type of leagues, kickers, defenses are very easy to find off the waiver wire. The ninth tip is looking at the other teams drafting around your team. If you're drafting at the 10th pick, you might want to say, oh, who's drafting at 11 and 12 if you're in a 12-team league to see who they need. So if they need a running back and you really need a running back to make sure you draft it because on the come around, it's likely that they are going to end up drafting a running back. It makes it for so much easier to decide what position you want to draft to make sure that the position, the other position that you need still ends up falling your way or so that you make sure that you just get that guy that you really wanted. This is something that's very key and it's something that not a lot of people tend to do because it gets a little bit more complicated, but you want to try to get into your heads of your opponents. You want to think, hey, what does this guy want to do so I can make sure I get my guy before they can steal it from your hands so that you can win your fantasy football championship. The 10th tip is to write down your team so that you can understand the buys and the positions on your team. Now, this isn't as important in an online draft, but for some people who don't have as good as of eyes as other people, you might want to look at this stuff and write it down because it might be a lot easier for you to follow. Now, understanding buys isn't necessarily the most important thing because, hey, a couple weeks into the season, a lot of these guys that you draft may not even end up being on your team because you cut them and you found new guys or you traded them. So I wouldn't necessarily focus on the buy part, but it is kind of important when you're drafting in like a super flex league because, hey, you don't want your two starting quarterbacks to both be on the same buy and even in one of those deeper type of leagues in a 14 team league you don't want both of your quarterbacks to be on the same buy because those guys might be on your team the whole goddamn year and you want to make sure you know what positions you have so that you know if you need to go for another position or keep loading up on the other position and it makes it a much easier to follow in a live draft especially if you're sitting farther away from the board the 10th or the 11th pick I should say is to try not to panic it's going to be pretty hard to not panic at times because once you got on the clock you see there's a minute two minutes to make your pick you might just shit yourself but if you've done all the research you've done all these things you will understand that it is easy not to panic you will be focused you'll be locked in and you'll be ready to fucking roll like your name is Stu finer so bonus tip is to click that fucking subscribe button the video is over I love you all. Let me know your guys' tips down below. There might be some tips that I missed, and I'd love to interact with you guys down below in the comments and have a nice old conversation. Click on one of the videos that's on your screen as well. I love each and every single one of you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with yet another banger of a video. Click that subscribe button. Buy the draft guide. You don't actually have to, only if you want to. Goodbye.